Hi, my name is Nick and today we're going to be checking out the AC clutch in this 2009 Honda Civic. Our first step to do is we're going to confirm our customer complaint. Our customer complaint is that the AC isn't blowing that cold. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in the car, we're going to test it out, and we're going to see what we're blowing. Okay, go in the customer car, we're going to confirm our complaint. What we're going to do, we're going to start it. Now that it's started, we're going to put our AC fan all the way up. It's all the way up, we have the air, max AC, as cold as it'll go. And now we're going to go ahead, let it sit for a minute, let it cool down. Okay, so we let the AC cool down a little bit. We're going to test out of the middle vent, our cold system. We don't have a thermometer, but I can already tell it's not blowing as cold as it should be. It's probably a couple degrees colder than what it is outside. So we're going to go ahead, turn off the fan, turn off the AC, and now we're going to go ahead and we're going to go check out the AC compressor plug. Alright, as you can see, it's not spinning right now because the AC is off. But when we turn it on, go ahead and turn it on. Okay, so our AC is supposed to be on, but the clutch isn't spinning, like it's not connected. You can see the clutch isn't working, so our next step is to go to the relay. We're going to go ahead and find that out. Okay, so here we have our AC circuit wiring diagram. So what we're going to do is we're going to follow our path of power. So pink is going to be our power. We get our original power from fuse 16. It travels all the way down through the rear window defogger relay, all the way down and across through our diode A, back through relay, all the way up, and it keeps going to the AC condenser fan relay with another diode, goes all the way back to fuse 21. So we want to check those two in our line as well as our main one. So here we've got the blower motor relay which the power goes through as well with this side but what we really want to look at is the AC compressor clutch relay so our main power is through fuse 20 so that comes into the switch through the junction connector into the AC compressor clutch and then there's the ground right there so as we're going through there's also the coil we need to check that ground so we're gonna go ahead and find that relay and that relay it's going to be hot at all times, so we don't even need to start the engine. So let's go ahead and find it. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to check for any visual discrepancies. So what we would do is you can look in your panel. So we know that in this case, we're looking at this 7.5 amp fuse and this relay right here. Now what I've went ahead and done is I've bench tested the relay using the car battery and we found that it is clicking. We've tested resistance, it has normal resistance through the coil, and we've also tested the fuse. The fuse is running completely normal, it's running perfect voltage, we've got a good reading on it. So right now, we're trying to find out what we should do next for our system. Okay, so we found out the fuse we want to find, that's going to be fuse 20. So if we come over to our fuse box, I've looked on our diagram, and it turns out it's going to be this fuse right here. So we're going to go ahead and stick our, our tester right here. As you can see, it lights up red. All that means is that there's voltage passing through that fuse. So we know that the fuse at least is letting enough through for the bulbs. So the best test to do is for a DVOM, or a digital voltmeter. So I'm going to go ahead and grab one, and we're going to go ahead and test it real quick. All right. So after testing the bolts, we're getting stored voltage at 12.6 volts, which is good. That's exactly what we want. Next, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to find the relay. So to do that, we're going to look at our diagram one more time. We're going to see where it is. Okay, I found our relay that we need to pull. I've also pulled it out. We have it on our bench because later we're going to do a bench test. So right now, what we're going to do is we're going to test if we have power. It should be hot at all times. I put the fuse in. We're good to go. The light should light up. We're going to find the terminal that we need to test. Here. First try. So we found it. This is going to be to our coil. Hopefully. Let's see if that's our coil. It should be another one. Okay. So this one feeds our coil and our switch. It's going to be a different relay. So that power is going to go through. It's going to activate our clutch because it's going to close the switch. So we're going to go ahead and see 
if the relay is actually fun to drink. Okay, so as you can see, we've completed our bench test. So this is on the coil side of our relay. And as you can see, we were testing for resistance. And in a coil, you want super high resistance because there's a lot of wire the electricity has to travel through. So here we have 114 ohms. It keeps on moving, but it's staying steady at about 114 ohms. That's exactly what we want. That's in spec. That's good to go. Okay, so another test we could do to test our relay is wow. a relay swap test. What that entails is we take our relay that we have in the vehicle now and swap it with a known good relay. So this relay can be brand new, or tested, just something lying around. We're going to need to swap it. Now in our case, our relay tested good. We've jumped it. We know that it's making contact on the switch side. The coil is working properly. It has the right spec for the resistance in the coil. So we know that's not the issue. But that's another way. If your relay isn't testing good enough, we can go ahead and, and do a relay swap test and that'll change everything and we'll see what we can do from there. So after reviewing some footage, I came to the realization that during the jumper wire test for the relay, I made a mistake by using the wrong plugs. So we went ahead and retested it off camera because I realized this after watching the cam after watching the footage, and we realized that it it was in fact clicking. It was in fact working. Actually, it did activate. So we know that the relay isn't the issue at this point. We know that there might be something down the line or it may even be uh, pressure related in the AC lines. All right, so in this test, what we're doing, we're checking for the path of voltage within the system. So if you look here in our prior test, we had it connected directly to the connector of the AC compressor, as you see by this red wire. Now, what we also have is our probe. Now, the probe is going to go on our fuse. That has the power going straight through it, it's going to send all the way to all the power. So we can test exactly how much voltage is dropping. So right now, the car is on engine engine off, but the key is on, we have the AC going. So everything should be powered on and ready to go. So let's go ahead and test it. Alright, and as you can see, it has 11.6 volts, so it's dropped from 14. Oh, let's let it settle. It has 11.6. So it's not dropping a whole lot. That means it's keeping a lot of voltage through. So what we're going to try to do is we're going to go through and we're going to also check resistance through the whole system. All we're going to do is we're going to slide on over to resistance. Let's go through the range. So our resistance to the coil in our AC clutch is what we're testing right now. We have 122.6 ohms through our system. So we check that. We know it's going to be good. Now we have a couple other things we need to check. Alright, so after testing for our voltage drop on the ground side and the power side of our compressor clutch system, we've come to the conclusion that the clutch does work, but it's not turning on because of a pressure switch. So what we're checking now is the low pressure and the high pressure side. So as you can see, we've hooked up our AC machine. The valves are closed on the line, as you can see. They're nice and tight. And come over here. You can see that the gauges are reading zero, which means there's no pressure in the lines. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead, we're going to press, press recycle. Yes. Valves are open. And now it's going to clear. And it's going to recycle all of it back in. It's going to measure how much is actually in there. Probably not a lot. All right. So after recycling, we ended up pulling four ounces out of the system. Now what we can see from the tag right here, I'll focus, we've got refrigerant type R134A and our charge, the maximum is 15.9 ounces and the minimum is 14.1. So definitely out of spec. So what we're doing right now, we went ahead and pulled a vacuum for 10 minutes. After that's done, we're going to go ahead, check for a leak by looking at the gauges, see how fast that vacuum leaves. And then we'll go from there, whatever we need to do. Okay, so after setting our vacuum for 10 minutes, we're going to go ahead and let the gauges settle for around 2 minutes and just check and see if the vacuum is lost. That'll show that we have a leak in the system. Right now, it looks like it's holding vacuum, but we're going to go ahead and give it a rest. Let it see if it goes up. All right, so after letting the gauges sit for around two to three minutes, they haven't moved, which means it's holding vacuum. There's no leaks. So we're going to go ahead and charge the AC. First, we're going to charge. And now the amount. So we're going to go over here. Our maximum is 15.9, our minimum is 14. We're going to go ahead in the middle. We're going to do 15 ounces. Go ahead, 15 ounces, press start, Mr. Fortin, are we putting in any oil right now or no? It just says PAG or PO. Uh, just put PAG. PAG? Well, it's a PAG system. Okay. I'm standing. Just go through the low side. Low side? Yeah. Alright, so we're waiting for our charge. We're just going to go ahead and wait for that to finish. Alright, so after charging the system with 15 ounces, we're ready to complete. So we're going to go ahead, continue. We're going to go ahead and start the evac. So we're, it's going to ask us to do, it's going to disconnect these hoses, turn on the engine, and it's going to clear the lines. I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera. And then after that, we're going to see if the clutch works. Okay, so after we disconnected the hoses, what we found is that the AC compressor clutch actually did activate. It was working perfectly fine. So we can conclude that it was just the low pressure that was the issue. We checked on the inside and it was blowing really cold. Temperature was between, uh, between 35 and 42 degrees at its lowest, which is really good. We want that. So that's our, that's our finished product. We found the issue, which is just low pressure. And sometimes that all, that's all it is, but uh, it's always good to check your entire system.